Hurricane 205. What's your thoughts on the offensive line? Offensive line needs to continue to get better. That's just a, a point of fact. But having a lot of guys returning um, is a benefit towards that. And also recruiting blue chip talent on top of what's in the room um, is hopefully going to help that down the line. Uh, again, you're not going to get – I mean, the guys like a Zach Rice, like a Julian, Julian Armella, uh, who went to St. Thomas and transferred to uh, – Gulliver for like a week, and then he's at Columbus now, first team All State, first team All American as a junior. Um, those are the few and far between who are going to come in as two freshmen in college and then play. You know, Alex Leatherwood, who chose Alabama over Miami, he's a guy who came in uh, and played right away. It's, there's few of those. Offensive line is usually going to be a three year position. So, as a redshirt sophomore or true junior, that's really when guys are going to take major steps forward. Uh, so, yeah, we do get some uh, some blue chip seeds. But we need to plant them and water them and grow, you know, have all that happen so those trees can grow down the line. But still adding those guys to the to the group is only going to help that development. So in terms of what's in the room, things are getting better. And in terms of recruiting, I think that the group that we got this class was good, not great. I would have loved another lineman, offensive lineman in this class, especially another blue chipper. That would have really Oh, like a, if we had another blue chip tackle in this 2021 recruiting class, that would have really raised the the ceiling on, or or yeah, just improved the standing uh, for that position group in this class. Although you know the three that we did get are very good, um, the hall could have been better um, by adding that blue chip tackle as or another blue chip tackle on top of Michael McLaughlin. Um, but yeah, it just again needs to. Uh, continue to get better, just like, you know, every position on the team. I don't think there's any position on the team that uh, we should feel 100% settled, even with uh, Lou Headley, who has the career record in college for net punting after two seasons. Um, you know, net punting average, I want to say, uh, which is wonderful, you know. So, I mean, hopefully he continues to get better, but the offensive line does need to as well. And to continue on that thought, Berge is asking about a follow-up on Devon Donaldson, his status. Mm -hmm and his uh, working his way back. Yeah, I mean, I believe, you know, he had the um, the knee injury, which precluded him from playing most of last season. Uh, I think, I mean, he has been doing his rehab for that. I believe he's been uh, in some of that has been with the uh, Feely in the weight room as well. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that he's lost some weight. Uh, but, you know, it, there's, it's still an ongoing journey. It's not, today you know what i mean of like peak physical shape or game readiness or anything but you know we'll continue uh again to have uh was it 198 days between now and alabama on september the 4th so i just continue to, to work on that the rod farva has posted miami's defensive rank since 2016 i don't think this is an end-all be-all to okay the best defense in the country is the best rank and da, 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 down the line but it's certainly a huge indicator to defensive performance and there was some bad offenses particularly in 17 and 18 that contributed to the defense being put in a bad position they were 67th in total defense at least this past season uh um, miami um, that's what the, the rod farva is showing us here 67th in terms of yards per game yeah 408.4 that's 67th so of course the north carolina game <laughs> took its hit on that number, um, I got to think NC State racked up some yardage. Um, I mean, there were a lot. Louisville had 516. I mean, we won by two tutties, but, you know, they did some numbers. Uh, Clemson had 550. Um, NC State only had 410. Uh, okay. Oklahoma State had 418, but then you had that almost 800 yards, 778 total performance uh, there. So, I mean, you got one, two – three games over 500 and another two games over 410. Uh, and then you settle right there at 408 yards per game, uh, 408.4, whatever it was that I said. So, yeah, that's uh, in terms of yards per game. Yeah, that's not great, Bob. And I'm going to scurry after this and go look up to see who was first team all ACC at defensive end. It was both guys from – Dot darn Pittsburgh. Oh, the two pit guys. But come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, look, one of them, fine. You know, but 
because, you know, one of them was first team All American too. So I'm fine with that. But then Jalen Phillips is first team All American, but you're going to take, like, come on, bro. Like, it just, this anti Miami ACC media thing, you know, like you find ways to discount what guys do or have done, even in a singular kind of a sense, you know, it just, it's infuriating. Like, come on. You got the best defensive end in America, first team All American, almost consensus, and then not even first team All ACC. Well, yeah, that's a huge disconnect. There's a misevaluation there somewhere, obviously, because yeah. if he's the best among five Power Five conferences and everybody else playing football, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Haters. <laughs> 